you guys my lego city style tower crane mock built for building lego skyscrapers in your lego cities so put on your hard hats because this video isn't for those who are scared of hats i mean heights onwards to the origin story all right and before i get into the nitty-gritty of this whole build i just want to say that this tower crane is seen and featured in my lego city paradisa city a tropical city set in the future in the year 2060 so go check out the video of my lego city premiere paradisa city right after this video so in this video, I'm going to break down all the features and functions of this tower crane and some of the basics of how I put it together. But first, the origin story. So I've always been a dude that's been fascinated with human engineering and always curious and fascinated with extreme machines and industrial stuff and how it all works. Garbage trucks, construction equipment, ships, jets, cars, fire trucks, cranes, you name it, everything. Tower crane is definitely within that category. So I've always wanted to do a tower crane ever since 2017, 2018, partly inspired by the uh, truss pieces that you see here. And in 2018, I think the blue truss piece had just came out. It was a new color for this truss piece. And I think it was on Lego Bricks and Pieces, it was the only one available at that time. And I had ordered a bunch of them in, I think it was 2018, early 2018. And this was right around the times that I was kind of starting to develop my Lego City Hospital. Which, if you haven't seen that, go check that out after this video. It is a hospital skyscraper, and it is nine stories tall above ground, and it's also got a basement. And it is packed and stacked with all kinds of hospital departments. Now, LEGO did build a tower crane. It was set number 7905, building crane, from all the way back in 2006. I never got my hands on that particular crane. It was a little too uh, technic looking to me. And the other thing, too, was that the tower of that crane didn't really look like an actual tower crane in real life. They were using these truss pieces for the tower part. So it didn't really appeal all that much to me. It was when I saw these truss pieces that I was like, yeah, I totally got to try having a tower crane with these truss pieces. And it finally wasn't until last summer, 2021, that I actually started putting this whole crane together. And as you can see, I didn't end up using the blue pieces. I ended up ordering a bunch of the yellow ones. And of course, kind of ran out of the yellow ones, so I'm using some gray ones as well. And I knew I was going to have this problem before I even started this video, but this crane does not fit in view of this camera. This crane is pretty significant in size. But starting off with the base, as you can see, I am using the truss pieces, the 1x6x5. And so the crane is six studs wide, of course. I think that's just right. That's the perfect proportional dimensions for the LEGO City minifigure scale. Now I know like in some people's LEGO Cities, this might be a little too big of a scale and um, that's fine, it's totally cool. But when you see this crane right up next to my skyscraper hospital, you'll kind of understand that it's the right proportion, it's the right size. And I'm slowly putting together another skyscraper, my apartment buildings, and that thing is currently 11 stories tall and possibly a 12th story, which is even taller than my Paradisa City Hospital. And so this thing is actually just barely taller than that. And that's significantly tall. In fact, I think all said and done, if I stand up next to this crane with the crane on the floor, it pretty much comes up to my chest. Now, one thing I've always been curious about, how do you get a crane to build a crane? Like they're so unbelievably tall. About four years ago, I just went on YouTube. The crane basically builds itself. It's, it's crazy, it's, it's fascinating. And in order to do that, it has to have this one special section that has a bunch of hydraulics on it kind of sets around the regular column and then this will set on that and the hydraulics will raise this up just enough for them to insert another portion. I'll put an extra link in the description below of a video that shows and explains how tower crates build themselves. Fascinating stuff, brilliant engineering, and so that's what I basically tried to do. I definitely wanted to have that feature built into my tower crane. 
and I don't think I've seen any other LEGO City tower crane have this feature. There is this one mock of a Technic tower crane that automatically builds itself and it's fully motorized and all that stuff, so... And that is pretty awesome. Although that one, it builds itself from the bottom. Whereas tower cranes today insert uh, new sections just below the turret. And one thing that I learned in my research on tower cranes is that they are actually anchored to a solid cement foundation that was built before the tower crane even arrives. And that foundation is you know, made of cement and rebar and it is embedded down into the ground quite a ways. And then when the tower crane arrives, it's bolted down to the anchors within that foundation. Now, I didn't build any sort of foundation that goes down into the ground, although Paradisa City does have an underground basement level. I'm just using a simple 16x16 16 16 plate. And one thing that I'm also using are these 3x3 3 3 round cylinders, and these things have surprisingly really good clutch power. I don't know if it's just that the tolerances of the pieces are a little tight on, on these things, but it's a good thing because the clutch power to to the 16 by 16 is, is incredible. So these things are not gonna pop off. 16 by 16, even though it's not a wide base, it's enough that if the crane does fall over, this is not gonna be the failure point. This will not tip over here. The failure point will be in the tower itself. Now, I can totally set up my crane without the self-building feature, but I like to have the self-building feature just because it's so awesome and because um, it can build itself, yeah. But in order to start off the self-building feature, the base needs to be a minimum of five truss pieces tall. And then the other thing I'm doing is I'm also using two by two round bricks, and I've got an axle that goes all the way through from the bottom truss piece through these two by two rounds, and then into the three by three cylinder pieces. And I really like the look of these three by three cylinder pieces because they look like they're part of a foundation, like a solid foundation that this whole tower crane is anchored onto. Now, as you'll notice in my promo video, I did one other thing, and that is to add an advanced feature, which is the elevator. So how do they get all the way up to the very top to control the crane? I built an elevator. Yeah. So right here, you can see that there are some steps that lead up to the entrance of the elevator. And the elevator is exactly the 4x4 dimensions. It's got a 4x4 plate at the very bottom. And then I'm using these cheese wedge slopes to basically help guide it through. Now one thing, when you build elevators, you don't want to have the elevator be in the exact dimensions of the tunnel that it's traveling through. Because LEGO pieces have tolerancing, obviously. Every piece is not a perfect dimension. I mean, that goes with anything that's been manufactured. are never exactly precisely how you design them. Because of the way things are manufactured, it's impossible to get things absolutely precise. Because of that, when you have like an elevator that's exactly the same dimensions as the tunnel it's traveling through, it gets snagged on all the pieces that have draft angles and tolerancing that is, is too much. And that's why a lot of people's elevators get stuck, because people built their elevators to the exact dimensions. Now in this case, I didn't really have much of a choice. It was going to be too complicated to build something that was like a 3x3. Three three. I didn't have very good solid options for building something smaller than the 4x4, four four. and so luckily it does slip through without really snagging on anything, and it really helps to having these cheese wedge slopes, which kind of deflect it so that when it hits the side, it kind of deflects it. And the other crazy thing too is that an elevator shaft is usually a solid built wall, but this is not. This is, you've got missing sections here or here, and the elevator has to guide itself through without getting, you know, tilted at an angle and all that stuff. Luckily with the door frames and with these cheese wedge slopes, it stays straight and solid all the way down through the main tower portion. And so as you can see, I can just drop the elevator right down into there. In order to raise and lower the elevator, I've got a winch up the very top. And, and I've designed it so that the hook is easily removable because when the crane is building itself, I can't have the cable going through there. So, all right, and here's the self-building feature that allows the crane to build itself. Now, this is way more bulky and unrealistic compared to real life because in real life, they use these hydraulics that raise and lower the crane and I couldn't do that. I tried using these Lego hydraulic rams and it didn't really work that well because the friction in these hydraulics is a lot. And then what you would have to do is that you would have to hold the bottom and then pull the top apart. And you need like four of these pretty much, you know, like one at each corner. In order to pull four of those apart and, or expand it, you have to really pull on it hard. And when you've got this massive crane balancing on the very top, that was just not gonna work. 
I mean, that was just a recipe for disaster because pulling on it too hard and then the whole crane would just topple over. And speaking of toppling over, yes, I have dropped this crane numerous times over the last six months. And it's usually a pretty catastrophic failure. And especially with the counterweights, when the counterweights hit the floor, it's a pretty loud clang. And even though it's like very upsetting when this whole thing crumbles apart and, and crashes to the floor, it also helps me learn and how to reinforce it and make it stronger and better and stuff like that. Or just be more careful. All right, so what did I do? I ended up creating this snapping feature. And so this guy slides over the top of the tower. It's mostly built with the trusses. It doesn't actually physically snap onto the tower itself. It's using these portions here and here, and then here and here to rest on each of these ledges here. And so that's why you see these tile plates right there. And I know the lighting isn't great in here, but that's what you see these bow slopes right here, these two by two bow slopes. This is where it rests on the tower crane itself. And then what I've done is I'm using the rubber Technic piece to kind of keep it held together. But then when you raise it, these bow slopes will deflect it open and it'll raise to the next section and it'll snap in place. And then I added these two as well. So it's stabilized one, two, three, four on all four sides. Up here is where they load the next truss section of the crane. And so each truss section comes in a stack of two truss pieces tall. And it basically just gets set on there, slides into place. And of course, we've got our super awesome tower crane construction dude who's helping to install each new portion and bolt it down and, and put them all in place. And then the other thing too is that I had to really calibrate this whole thing so that the crane, because the crane sits on top of here and right here is where the turntable is. You know, I had to calibrate it so the height was just perfect so that this could slide in without hitting anything. Then of course, I had to calibrate the position of these so that the tower crane came right up to right where the next truss piece was gonna come in. All right, so this thing is good at going up, but it's terrible at going down. So it's definitely a struggle because I have to basically kind of pull these apart and then I have to, oop, that went, yep. And then I have to pull them apart again to get down to the second section, but I gotta do it four times. And there we go. And so here you can see how the tower crane comes right up to where the entrance is. And then these are designed, you would only install them in this position right there and allows the minifigure to stand right there at the bottom. This will go right over his head and then this drops in place. And then once this guy is installed, you just raise it up, two snaps, and voila. And so all the weight of the crane itself is being transferred through this guy and then down to each of these four sections. And here you can see where it rests on the edges right there. So now it's ready for the next section. And so you can just keep building the crane uh, as tall as you want. So if I ever want to make it even taller, I can just come along, add another section and uh, make it even taller. So unlimited skyscraper height, yeah. All right, and the turntable actually sits right on the very top. Now it's not super secure, it's only held by four studs of clutch power on this side and four studs of clutch power on that side. But I'm using this 6x8 Technic frame and that really helps add rigidity because this portion right here needs to have that strength and, and support at the very top of a very rigid frame. And when I first started building this last summer in my original mock-up, I was using just the regular LEGO system turntable with a bunch of tiles on there. And it was all right, it, it actually functioned pretty well. But I decided I wanted to use the Technic turntable because it has the hole that goes right up through the middle of it. And I wanted that hole because I wanted my minifigures to be able to get access to the cabin from the middle and not have to create some sort of ladders or a system that has to go up and around. And the crazy thing about Technic is that they are based on an odd numbered system. So a lot of the Technic beams and elements are, you know, threes and fives and sevens and nines and elevens. And so they're not even numbers. And so this Technic turntable is the same way. It's got Technic beam attachments that are five studs apart. And so that makes it difficult to coordinate with Lego system parts 
because LEGO System Parts is mostly even numbered stuff. You know, the two, four, six, and eight and all that stuff. And here you can see that I'm using a Technic beam frame, which is five by seven. I'm using the two by two jumper plates to snap that down there. And then on the underside, I'm also having to use a bunch of jumper plates to attach to another five by seven Technic frame uh, just under there. All right, so this little hand crank right here is for raising and lowering the elevator that brings the crane operator all the way up to the cabin. This is a state-of-the-art tower crane, and why not have an elevator feature? And it was an extra challenge to include that in there. So I was really happy that I was able to pull it off. The one major flaw with this is that it can only go up to here. And so how does the minifigure get all the way up to the operator cabin? What I designed is that so the operator can kind of step out onto these platforms on either side, or the elevator can be moved off to the side and just temporarily stationed right there. In order to get the remainder of the way up there, I went ahead and installed a secondary elevator feature, which is basically just a Technic axle with a little bracket in order for the minifigure to stand on, and it just barely allows the minifigure to kind of fit on through the 3x3 size hole in the center of the turntable. The other unfortunate thing is that I don't have a Technic axle long enough to reach all the way down to here, but that's the idea, is that the, this thing would lower down when he needs access. So he takes this elevator all the way up to here, gets off, this little thing, he just kind of straps onto that, stands on this little platform, and then he can raise himself up to the middle. In order for him to fit up to the middle, I gotta raise his arms straight up to his face. And of course, he'll have to attach his safety harness to this little elevator right there so he doesn't fall off. And then you'll also have to imagine that this comes all the way down to the platform. So I think when I get a hold of a longer Technic axle, it'll make a lot more sense but temporarily for now, I'm just using the shorter Technic axle. And then the minifigure would just ride on up through the middle. All right, and then of course, this little elevator is gonna get in the way of the self building feature. So if you'll notice, there's a little red bushing on there and I just push that bushing down. I push the little elevator all the way up and it just kind of stays and tucks itself nice and neatly up inside of there. So here's where the little elevator is. The little minifigure will stand there and it'll go on up into the crane. So that was pretty much the last technical challenge for me to kind of figure out on this crane. Why it's taken so long to make a video on this crane, just because that was one of the last features to figure out, was how to get the minifigure from here up to here. I did think about, you know, like maybe the minifigures could unhook the elevator and then they could just hold on to the, the hook from the winch and just ride that on up. You know, I thought, you know, that wasn't really realistic or practical. Not something that you would see in real life. All right, so let me talk about the operator cab. Yeah, I absolutely love this operator cab. I love the fact that it's teal. In fact, I love the teal paired with the yellow. So it's primarily a yellow crane, but it's got teal color accents. If you look at the, the color spectrum wheel and colors that complement each other, orange and yellow complement teal, I think the best, because they contrast each other nicely. But then discovering that I could use this guy, and this I thought was just amazing because it gave an excellent view for the operator, you know, to look down and, and see what's going on. And then having the, the triangle teal tiles right there was just awesome. And then using the uh, shipping container wall panel, and then of course having this guy up here at top, it just really gave this a really sleek and kind of, you know, slightly futuristic look to the operator cab. And then all you gotta do is just pull this off right off the front to get access to the, the operator seat. So there you can see inside, and actually this guy right here is his little operator computer. And then on the underneath, there is a robotic sensor. So this little tower crane can actually be controlled completely remotely even. And then also certain features, the crane can have machine learning or AI robotics kind of do do a lot of the work, so it may not even need to have an operator at all. So one reason why the cab is sticking out and not over the turntable is because I really, really wanted to use this shipping container piece because I just like the aesthetic of it so much that I, I didn't want to give it up. This piece pushes the whole cab forward and it's not unrealistic. There are some tower cranes. I don't think they're common, but there are tower cranes where the cab is sitting out over the front rather than over here. And then the other thing too was I wanted to have a doorway opening right there to help assemble the crane. So they have a little platform so that when the crane is first being assembled, all the major pieces are coming together. These guys are all up over, climbing all over this thing and bolting it all together with some massive bolts. 
And then if you look inside, there's actually a storage cabinet in there. And then the operator can store his lunch in there or some tools. Now, when I first started building this, trying to figure out how to build a gym was a big concern of mine, of course. And I knew right away that I wanted to use these, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna have to use, say like three of them kind of stacked in a triangle or not. But luckily I was able to just use a single piece truss column. And amazingly, I was able to use some bricks with a Technic axle hole in it. And for each section, I've got a axle in there. So it's not just relying on just the stud clutch power from brick to brick. It also has an axle in there. And so if there is any sort of major failure the axle helps hold everything together, especially in the connection from the jib to the main superstructure there as well. There's an axle that helps coordinate it all together. And then for the trolley, I think it's the trolley, what I've got is that I've got this bracket right here, and then I've got these plates with the rail on it. And then I've got the one by four brick that has the groove in it. And so this just slides on these plates right there. And I'm really, really blown away with how much clutch power these things are. I don't trust, you know, for something that has to lift a lot of weight. And if you see my thumbnail, this crane lifted that entire crane and that crane is not light. It has actually got a lot of weight to it. And this thing was able to hold it at least up until the, the second connection right here. Uh, any further than that, I didn't have enough weight on the opposite end and the crane uh, would tip over. But what I'm still blown away by is that these brackets right here the clutch power on these is not letting go of this stack of plates. And literally all that weight is pulling down on these rails, which is pulling on the clutch power of just four studs per bracket. And they're not budging. I've seen Lego bricks and plates lose their grip with way more stud connections than just these four. Um, and obviously they're spaced out quite a bit too, but I think it was just a matter of either luck or that these things are holding on. So, and I'm really glad because this is a very compact solution for allowing the trolley to basically move back and forth. If this wasn't able to hold the weight, I would have had to come up with a completely different solution. And basically you'd have to kind of create something on the very top of the jib in order for this to bear the weight of whatever it's lifting. And then for me, it would have made it look terrible and unappealing so yeah now the trolley itself i do have it reinforced with brackets so it is a bunch of bricks stacked upside down but then i've got these brackets and these plates that are kind of holding it all together now this guy okay you can also see that the string has kind of come off of here now in the very beginning the string was very kind of wound up and so it was always wanting to get twisted spin around and get twisted just like that yeah now it doesn't do it so much maybe it kind of locked its uh twist in the, in the string but that's one of the reasons why i'm using this very large pulley wheel and of course paradisa city has its thrill seekers and this particular lady is one of the paradisa city's resident thrill seekers and she makes her own videos where she's sneaking into places where she doesn't belong and climbing super high structures and she also does a lot of parkour and of course we've got some paradisa city wildlife sitting up here at the top. That's kind of like a, a harpy eagle. I think the country Panama, their state bird is the harpy eagle, which is a type of eagle that only exists down there. And of course, Panama is a very tropical area. So Paradisa City, also being a tropical city, has definitely got its share of tropical wildlife eagles. And as with all typical cranes, it's got the superstructure going up the very middle, rising up above the the cabin and of course it's got the the long tension rods that go out to both ends and that's what allows the counterweight to pull back on the jib all the weight that's being lifted from the jib all right it is extra extra tiring holding my hand like this for like 10 minutes of recording out in front of the camera like this this is crazy but yeah here we go so out here over on the very end, uh, this is where the tension rods, I don't know what the official name of these are, I'm just calling them tension rods for the moment. They're being pulled in tension. But over here at the end, I've got the double pulleys so that the winch line can wrap around unobstructed. And of course the winch line goes over to here, goes through a pulley, goes down to the hook, and then comes back up and is secured to this bar right there. And then also over here is the pulley for moving the turret forward and back down the length of the jib. So this is where I have the pulley for moving the turret down the jib. And actually, I struggled with creating this for quite some time. And this is also one of the things that took me the longest to figure out, just because you need to have the cable 
go through, kind of wrap around the end, and then attach to that. But then you also need to have the cable come on the opposite side and attach to the turret. And so one side will pull it this way, and then the cable that's on the other side will come back over here. And when that's being pulled, it'll pull it back this way. And so there were several different ways that you could try and do this, but most of them were unsuccessful for me. In the very beginning, I had two different winches and one winch would turn one way and the other winch would turn the opposite way and they had to be perfectly coordinated with each other. So I had to have an axle going in this way that would turn the winch that would move the trolley this way. And then I have a couple of 90 degree gears that would reverse the spin of the winch on the other side so that it would pull it this way. And that took up a lot of space and it was really uncoordinated because there was some slop in the gears. And whenever there's a miscoordination between the two pulleys, then the cable that pulls the trolley on one side would start to get slack and start to sag really badly. And that was no good. Then I was able to come up with a way to use a single axis all the way through so that both winches were on the same Technic axle. But what I did was on one side, the cable would wrap around directly onto the winch. But on the other side, the cable would come in, go past the winch and then loop back around and then wind up onto the winch so that it ended up reversing it. And that helped to streamline and simplify the whole winching process. And then because both winches are locked to the same Technic axle, they both spin at exactly the same rate. However, I still ended up with a situation where there was slack in the cable because no matter how tightly and precise I wound up the cables onto the winches, depending on how much thread is wrapped around the winch, the diameter would change. And because of it, there was variability in how much string the winches would wind up. And so that is what created the situation for having slack in the strength. So it actually wasn't until like just last week, I ended up just going on YouTube and I saw somebody else how they did it. And they actually used a couple of rubber wheels and the string would wind between two rubber wheels. So I decided to go with the rubber wheel approach, but I was able to do it with just a single rubber wheel. So I'll show you that. So here's what I used for the pulley. And I'm using a, a rubber tire that's set into these grooves of these thin 90 degree bezel gears. And it sandwiches in there just perfectly. And it's really cool. I'm really glad I discovered that little feature. And so it sits like this. And then there's the smaller bevel gear that basically rotates it. And I got it on the other side too. Now I tried this approach in the very beginning, but what happened at that time was that I didn't use any rubber sort of wheel. And so the thread would come around and I had wrapped it around many times. And so what would end up happening is that as you spin it, it releases the thread on one side, but it would pull the thread on the other side. But the thread that's being pulled and wrapped around ended up wrapping on top of the thread that was being released. And then it would just jam up. And you can't really have it so that the cable just kind of goes around and back out. And especially without the rubber tire, there's just almost no friction to pull on the string, no matter how tight you would make it. So with my latest approach, I'm using a rubber tire for extra friction. And then the other thing too is that by using these large bevel gears, it prevents the string from working its way off of the tire. And also the fact that the tire actually sits down in these grooves. And it also prevents the thread from working its way off of the tire. And then so what I've done is I've only wrapped it around a single time and then I pull the string as tight as I possibly can to get a lot of friction. But the heavier the load that the crane is having to carry, the greater the force is required to move the trolley back and forth. So at really heavy loads, that crane with this crane and this was able to pull the trolley inwards with the weight of that crane, but it wasn't able to move it back out. So under really heavy loads, this system kind of fails a little bit and I'm just using a really thin tire. All right, so I forgot to mention earlier, but this is called the jib, and the other side is called the counter jib. And so in the very beginning, I had chose these structural Lego columns to build my counter jib. And I think they're just the right size. And it's basically mounted over to the superstructure with some brackets and bricks, but it's also got an axle that runs through it this way too. I've got a bunch of two by 16 plates with a bunch of tiles on there. And these really helped reinforce these this structure right here. And I've got a Lego weight embedded into the very end of this and it actually just is perfect counterweight for the entire system. So this thing is really well balanced just with this counterweight already built into it. I got some red lights up there for any aircraft for them to watch out for. 
And actually, I should have done it for the very end of the jib as well. And this is just my winch, and it's got some friction right there so that it's not all loose and you can lift the loads. And I chose to put the winch over here because in my research, I found that most of the winches are out here on the counter jib and not located here in the superstructure. And I think one reason why that is, is, is because it actually does more than just lifting. It also helps balance the whole structure. Oh, my arm is tired. And I'm really happy to say that this thing is, um, is pretty solid. It's, uh, I can shake it and wiggle it and kind of teeter it back and forth and it is, it's stable. Sometimes I'll start to see a little bit of separation right here, but it's not going anywhere. Now, one of the drawbacks to this is that while it's balanced pretty well all by itself, it can only maintain very light loads about to the middle here without adding any extra weight. But any heavier loads and even light loads that end up way out here, I need to start adding more weights. And I gotta say that I'm really happy that LEGO reintroduced the LEGO weights. So I think it was in 2019, I noticed that they had come back in one of the, I think it was a LEGO education kits, and I immediately ordered some. So these weights are really helpful. So here are the LEGO weights. I'm not sure how much they weigh, uh, but they are pretty hefty. And of course, when you stack like four of them on there. And so I had to have all four of these all the way at the very end, just to hold the weight of that mobile crane right there. And that mobile crane is even heavier than my garbage truck. and the garbage truck is actually heavy. The other nice thing too is that the weights just slot right in here and then they can easily slide back and forth depending on the weight that you're lifting. And this brings up another interesting fact about tower cranes in real life is that they have their counterweight at the very, very end of the counter jib and they don't move back and forth to counterbalance the load that they're lifting. And I thought that was really odd. I was like, how does the crane not fall over if it's not balanced? And after a little bit of investigation, I found that what happens is that the crane is naturally imbalanced when it's not carrying a load. So there's more weight on the counter jib and the crane wants to kind of teeter over that way. But the reason why it doesn't is because of the tower structure that the crane sits on top of. So what happens is that the crane wants to tilt because it's heavy on this end. And what's happening is that this side of the tower is under compression. It's being compressed down by all the weight. But because it wants to tip over that way, this side of the tower structure is under tension and it's being pulled. And so these steel beams are what's holding the crane rigid. They can handle that tension. And of course, the bottom of the crane is anchored to the foundation that is embedded into the ground. So this is where the drawback is with these Lego pieces, is that yes, they can handle the weight under compression, the downward weight, but they can't handle any tension. It's almost like concrete. Concrete can handle compression, but concrete will fail under tension. And so on this side, the Lego tower structure is under compression, it does fine, but on this side, it is under tension and it's being pulled apart. And so what happens is that it starts to separate and then it falls over because the friction here is not strong enough at all. And it really makes me wish that LEGO had made it so that these truss pieces would allow a much longer Technic axle to go a lot further through them rather than these tiny little red cross axles. It, but even then, it still needs a lot of friction to hold things in tension. And so that's the major drawback to the LEGO tower cranes made with these truss pieces. Now there is something that I could do to keep all this in tension but it doesn't exist in real life. But what I would do is I would kind of mount a pulley up here and I think a pulley over here, and then I would anchor a string all the way down at the very bottom, run the string up to here, over the pulley, back down, underneath an, and then a pulley at the very bottom, and then it would come back up and then the pulley would wrap around here. And then what I would do is I would just have a ratcheting mechanism where I could tighten it and it would lock and the tighter I pull it, the more it keeps this whole thing in tension. And if I could do that, then the crane could withstand a lot more imbalanced forces without me having to move the counterweight all over the place or keep adding more and more weights, depending on the load that it's lifting. So yeah, I could use some string and wrap this thing tightly so that it keeps everything in compression so that it can handle being pulled up this way when it wants to tilt over. But again, it wasn't worth the effort. So the tower crane in the 2006 set did not use these and actually used actually used these pieces, which does allow, allow a longer axle, but they also reinforced the whole entire crane with a bunch of Technic bricks going up through the center of it. And that helped maintain the compression to resist 
the tension when the crane was out of balance. But I didn't want to go that approach. I really like these, they look like a tower crane. The other way it does not look like a tower crane to me. So yeah. Now a crane of this size and capability, you might be wondering why didn't I motorize this crane? And it was really because it just would have been too complicated to have to try to integrate the motor. I really need a much smaller motor. Lego motors are, are too big and chunky to fit in you know, a lot of Lego minifigure scale situations. And it just wasn't worth the effort to add the motors. I would need to have the battery box over here as part of the counterweight, build a bunch of stuff to add the electric motor over there. And then I would also need to run a cable over to here and then add a motor into here. And then that would have added a lot of bulk up here to the top and what would have ruined the, the smooth aesthetic that I was going for. So, and I'm not really going to be using this a whole lot. It's really just, I can play around with it just once or twice, put it in my Lego city. Yeah. So what do you guys think? I'm loving the teal and the yellow. I love the teal cab. I love this windscreen. The way this cab looks to me is just completely awesome. And the fact that it functions really, really well, actually. And I'm also amazed that it's able to hold way more weight than I even anticipated. That mobile crane, it can hold all the way up to here, the four weights that I have. And I was super impressed. I did not expect you would be able to hold something that heavy. And what it is holding that crane, like the saggage right here, is actually pretty minimal. I was, I'm, I was impressed. So during the filming of this video, I did not drop this crane, but, but I was dropping it a few days before when I was trying out the garbage truck. I probably dropped the garbage truck like four times. <laughs> you gotta be really careful because like as you're as you're putting the garbage truck onto the hook, you're also trying to put the counterweight on there at the same exact time as well. And sometimes it goes awry. Or, or I think one time the hook broke off and then dropped the garbage truck. So if you want to see the tower crane in my LEGO City, go check out my shaky drone video, which is only two minutes long. Or go ahead and check out my Paradisa City premiere video, the very first video of my LEGO City coming together. I made a little bit of progress on the Paradisa City since last time, but I'm mostly working on a new building. Unfortunately, it's going to take me a lot longer to finish that building because I've got to wait for pieces to arrive. And right now, LEGO is taking a long time to send those pieces. And then the other thing too is on BrickLink, those pieces got ridiculously expensive. I mean, super expensive. So I'm very excited to finish the building that I'm working on. All right, fine, I'll tell you. It's the, uh, the boutique hotel and I'm loving how it's turning out so far. So can't wait to finish it. That will get included into the city probably, I would say worst case scenario, two and a half months. Cool. And um, yeah, so if you like this tower crane, let me know. Leave a comment. If you're a tower crane expert, share some knowledge. So, you know, basically what I summarized here was just from some brief research and I'm always eager to learn more. Oh, and I just got word from the hospital that uh, Billy Bob, the construction worker, is gonna be okay. Good thing he was wearing his hard hat. All right, all right, all right. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll check y'all later.